Welcome, this is the RPA Champion and in today's video you will learn the difference between process and object in Blue Prism. Now this video is going to be very informative because we're going to go through the details of the different actions that are present in the process builder and the different components or actions that are present in the object builder. So let's jump right into it. So the first thing that we should understand before diving into actually the different actions and components that make up Blue Prism and the building of processes, we should understand the difference between process and object. So the process is your main flow, the flow that is going to be running with all of the different components. So imagine you need to send an email, you need to, uh, you need to collect some information from an Excel sheet, you need to get that information, work on that information, put it inside an email and then send that email to, to some person. So this would be a process. Now this process is made out of many different little components like downloading or opening the Excel file, extracting the information from the Excel file, formatting that information, opening your mail application, uh, creating a new email. So there's different components that make up this big process. Now you can see the big process as the process and the little components you would build them inside of Object Studio. So this is the difference between process and object. And obviously the objects are cool because they are reusable. You can use them to build different processes with the same objects. So you can have one process that is using one object from another process. This is a really good feature from Blue Prism and why it, uh, other software developers have it as well. But Blue Prism really emphasizes on this feature. And let me just show you what I mean in here they really separate the process from the object. So really giving you a clear, uh, a clear visibility how to find them and how to access them, unlike some other, uh, some other tools. Great, all right, let's, let's start with the differences. So let's start with the process. These are the main actions in the process that allow you to build your process. Now I'm not going to go into the details of every single action, just some of the main actions. Some of them are also pretty uh, self-explanatory. So let's, we, we've seen in a previous video data items. So let me put a couple of data items right here. These hold variables. Data items and collections, these are present both in the process and also in Object Studio. So you can create data variables and data items and tables, you can store them both in the object and in the process studio. Now, the block, a block is used to group different items. It can be used to group data, can be used to uh, catch exceptions, it can be used for different things. But this is also present in both. Uh, this is only for the process. This allows you to read another process inside of your process. Let's say you are uh, you have two different processes, this process can trigger a separate process. Page. Page is also on the object. The page allows you to uh, open uh, or reference other pages that are inside of your either process action. Now, this is something that you will be using a lot. This is both in the object and the process studio, and this allows you to either call objects inside of your process, uh, or call, it allows you to call objects inside uh, of your process so that you can call any object that you have built or that you have imported or that you have imported. So that is action. A action is also present in the object studio. Uh, decision, decisions are present in both. This will allow you to, uh, to decide on a path as if in a true or false. The choice, the choice is like a nested set of decision, like a nested if many if statements. So, but we will see, uh, we'll have a dedicated video on each one of them and go into detail. There is a lot to cover on each one. So right now, the objective of this is so that you have, can have an overview, know the different capabilities so that you can better use the tool, better learn it and better know exactly what, how you can use different tools and what you need to learn about different components and little tools of this main tool. 
So we uh, uh, we were at choice calculation, multi calculation, data item, and collection. They're all the same. Loop as well is also in the other one. This allows you to cycle through a uh, a set of actions. So for example, if we put a loop, everything that we put inside of this loop would be cycled for any number of times that we that we decide. So this is how we create. This is one of the ways that we create repetitions in our code. Then we have anchor. This is to obviously to make our process beautiful because that is important as well. So as you can see, I can take an anchor and then I can point the arrows to wherever I want, making it a little bit nicer. Uh, we have the alert and the alert is not present in the object. The alert is used to uh, stop the uh, here is here is the alert. The alert is used to uh, give you an action, or once the process hits that hits that step, it's supposed to give you an alert. Then we have the exception, the recovery, and the resume. Without going into too much detail about this, these are used to manage exceptions and to recover or resume gracefully from a failed execution. These are here as well. Now, uh, the Process Studio has less, uh, has less objects. The majority of these, except the alert, are present, the alert and the process, obviously, are present inside of the object. Now, let's take a look at the object builder. The first difference that we see that we have this read, write, and navigate of uh, drag and drop items or navigation. So what this allow you to do, they allow you to uh, navigate through your applications, for example. So this one would allow you to read data from an application, a uh, Windows browser, a table. This will allow you to write data inside an input field or wherever data needs to be written. And this would allow you to navigate through the different pages of the application. So imagine clicking or navigating to a link or opening an application. So these are the main uh, main functions that you will be using to build your automation. Then we have code. This allows you to import and run your own code. Uh, we have the wait stage. This is uh, we are going to be looking this into detail because there's a lot to say about the wait stage. But this just basically allows the robot to pause and spend some time waiting before going to the next step. After that, we have the process. The process is uh, pretty self-explanatory. It allows you to run a process inside of your action. We have the page. We have covered this, the action decision. And the majority of these are the same. Note is just uh, a reference. Uh, it is good. It is a good, uh, good idea to always, when you save your processes, to leave uh, to leave the update and also to add a little note inside each one of your pages, just so that you can uh, save important information and remember it later. So I hope this gave you a pretty good understanding of the differences between the object and the studio builder. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day.